Hi, everybody, and welcome to Cambridge Photography Week and our on-demand content. I'm absolutely delighted to have Mark Alvarez with me today. Um, and we're going to be talking through uh, one of Mark's projects um, called Light and Shade. So let's get on with it. How are you doing, Mark? You okay? I'm fine, thank you. Chris? Brilliant. Good stuff. Thanks for joining. Um, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's start with just a bit of an intro. Just tell us a bit about yourself, Mark. Um, I'm originally from East London, but I've been fortunate enough to live in Cambridge for the last 20 odd years. Um, I've always been a particular fan of the arts in general, uh, whether that's theatre or film or art. Um, okay. But I've always been particularly drawn to black and white photography. Um, I was influenced, I guess, originally by the, the, the amazing landscapes of, of Ansel Adams, but the uh, quite like the sort of French feel from Cartier-Bresson and Robert Bono. Um, but I think later in life, I've been more influenced by people like Michael Kenner, um, who's an award-winning uh, photographer, best known for his um, landscape photography. But most of it is... Um, uh, black and white long exposure photography, okay. which I'm a particular fan of. Um, mm. So um, I've I come fairly late to um, to to selling um, photography and actually even taking it okay. up. Um, okay. I've only re really been doing this for about sort of I bought myself a good camera about seven years ago. So. And I've only really been exhibiting for about the last three or four years. So, uh, That's good. I, I, yeah, I've, I've come fairly late to it. But uh, I sort of recommend to anybody that um, if they want to, to, to try anything, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly never too late. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it, yeah. it's so much more accessible these days, isn't it, I think? And it's, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. I think so, yeah, yeah. And what is it about, um, what is it about art photography that you, you, you love? Um, I think the, I mean, I particularly like the, the black and white um, photography. Um, I've always been drawn to it. I think, I think technically the answer is that black and white photography means that without colour you, you concentrate on the subject, you concentrate on the composition. But I think, you know, it's often a bit more personal than that. I mean, I, I think I like the, the timeless quality of, of, uh, of black and white images. Um, you know, almost the, the romance or, the, or how surreal it can make uh, an image. I, I mean, yeah. I, think, I think that's what I'm trying to strive for. I, I, don't, want, I don't want it to look, if I, if I take a photo, I want it to look slightly different. I want it to, to fire the imagination. And I, I think that's what a, what a, a lot of, uh, of, of good art photography does. Mm. I suppose gonna, kind of, with colour there can be more distractions as well. <laughs> you know, yes, uh, yeah, I think it is more distracting, and, and that's mm. not just you know, there's 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 nothing wrong with colour photography either. You know, a, a, yeah, a good, you know, a good photo is a good photo, but but mm. for me, there's there's definitely something about the black and white that that, as I say, sort of fires my imagination. I guess. Yeah, lovely. And um, so, tell us a bit about your light and shade. Um, project we'll tap through some photos um for sure let's let's we'll go through some of your pieces yeah, but yeah. yeah tell us a bit about about that project um so this is this is really the 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 recent work that i've been exhibiting and it's um and it's been predominantly black and white much more so than uh, than when i first started exhibiting um and it's it's uh, it's been mostly about um Really, for me, the, the, it's using black and white photography so that you are concentrating on, on the light and shade in the images. Um, and a lot of what I do is actually shoot without much light. So a lot of the images are, are shot at dawn or even pre-dawn on, on a okay. beach somewhere um, or shot at night or during the mist. Uh, you know, if, if, if there's some mist, you know, sort of run, run out and try and capture... Um, some, you know, some local landmarks, but actually, you know, in, in the mist, which, which gives them, um, you know, much, uh, you know, gives it a, a much more sort of a, a ethereal look. 
Um, mm. So it's so most of what I'm doing is is long exposure photography with with a with a lack of light really, mm. um, which I, which I just think makes it a lot more interesting. Um, and the Let's... yeah, sure. <laughs> no, go on. No, go on. Go on. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's uh let's go let's 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 take a spin through some of your yeah, some sure. of your uh, pieces then so we've got um this looks familiar this is fairly central isn't it yeah yeah this is um sussex street in central cambridge um which a lot of people might be familiar with um you've got a, a fairly typical cambridge bike with its with its basket mm -hmm. there um yeah. this this was so this was shot at night um but pretty much um, sitting on the um, sitting on the pavement and looking up under the um, the curved arch of, of Sussex Street, so you can see the sort of flaking paint on the, the ceiling there. So mm. it's really about just um, you know, as, as most photographers are doing, trying to find a different interesting angle. So um, it's it's not an obvious shot of um, of Sussex Street, um, mm. but with a with a focus on a a typically uh, Cambridge bike. Yeah, very Cambridge, absolutely. It's lovely. And this one it says Jesus, Jesus Green, isn't it? This is, yes, this is the um, the row of um, the parade of sort of trees at, at uh, Jesus Green. Um, this was um, a couple of years ago. And one of those mornings I woke up and it was, it was quite foggy um, and, uh, and basically grabbed the camera and, and dashed down there. Um, and this is probably this is um, this is one of the most popular, I think, um, images that I've taken. Um, people, people really seem to, to love this image. Um, I love the way the there's a person disappearing into the fog, um, mm. and it becomes it becomes less and less clear, obviously, as uh, as you go back into the uh, the image, you know. Um, mm. You know, uh, uh, again, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, um, it, it's a scene that people like, but um, it's it's just slightly different, and um, and I think it helps people make up a story of uh, of, of what's happening there, really. Yeah. So you got just in a few seconds time that that guy with his rucksack on, yeah. person with his rucksack it gets gets disappears into the yeah, into yeah. the fog. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> and you actually, I suppose, because you're in your I'm up near the Grafton Centre, aren't you? So yes, you're yeah. fairly close, you know, well, you know, a quick quick 20-minute walk in into the centre, aren't you? So you're quite yes, reasonably right. close yeah. to stuff, which means you can you can get up and go quite quickly. Yes, that's, helps, that's absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Literally all these opportunities are on your doorstep as well, which is fantastic. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. And this one, this looks fur slightly further afield, this one does. This is... Um... This is actually on the Gower Peninsula, um, and um, it's a shot um, near um, a place called Whiteford, um, which is fairly uh, south in the uh, on the Gower Peninsula. And it's um, I often plan um, the um, the images that I'm going to capture. I was actually when I took this, I was on my way to take a picture of a lighthouse. Um, which is about a mile or two walk from from where this was. So I had no idea that these these sort of um, old dead trees were there, or that it was going to be you know there was going to be a slight mist. But um, so this was a fairly spontaneous shot, and I'm not the most spontaneous photographer. As I say, I often plan trips, and I know what I'm going to get by and large. But it's really nice to stumble across a scene like this or, on the way. And I probably took only two photos, uh, uh, you know, as I was of, of this particular scene. Um, oh, and it was just, you know, um, I just felt really, really lucky to have um, stumbled on it, really. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. Um, I suppose because that's because that just because it strikes you, doesn't it, straight away? Rather yeah. because it's not part of your planned, yes, you know, yeah. your, your shot list, so to speak. It's what, the fact it strikes you straight away means that actually you know it's going to be a good shot, which means yeah. you only have to take a couple, um, yeah, yes, rather yeah. than being more speculative about it. Yeah, yeah. And where was this taken? This is um, this is a, a little place called Shingle Street, 
which is on the, the Suffolk coast. It's mm. fairly remote. Um, this, was, this was a sunrise um, earlier this year, sort of it, it, was, it was still very cold. It was actually an amazing, colourful sunrise. But again, um, I've got some colour shots of it, but I'm, I much prefer this. I much prefer the simplicity. But, you know, you've still got a really wide range of, of tones there. Um, so this is, um, and it's a long exposure shot, um, so which renders the, 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 the sea um, smooth and, and misty. Um, and um, and slightly reflective as well. Um, so uh, it's um, yeah, it, it, it's um, it, it's amazing when you go to some of these places. We live in a really crowded world, and we live in a you know <laughs> Britain's quite crowded as well. But you know, I was only, I was the only person there for hours on end, which is uh, which is amazing, really. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, it feels fairly unique in these days, isn't it? To, yes, yeah, to, yeah, it's lovely. This, this, for me, this is a perfect example of how, you know, we talked earlier on about, you know, how, you know, black and white can just like, you get something totally different from the black and white shot. And the way, you, the way yeah. you've treated it as well is just, uh, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Well, thank you. And, I, you know, and I think these, you know, if, if you don't know where it is, I, you know, I think it allows people to, like with all art, to, to sort of imagine where it is and what it is. And, uh, mm. um, and, and you know, Hopefully, it brings back sort of memories of you know of uh, um, you know of coastal visits for for whoever's looking at it. Well, it also also seems a little bit extraterrestrial. I think there's, there's a well, you know, it's, it seems well, of, of another world in, in places. I, I really like the ethereal quality of. Uh, I mean, that that's what I'm often trying to achieve. So I'm not quite pleased mm. you said that. Case. No, it's lovely. It's lovely. This looks like it is in a pretty nice, nice climate. Is that right? Where is this? Um, well, this this is actually uh, this is Margate. Um, oh, is it? Okay. So this is um, that's a statue, um, and oh, okay. it's an Anthony Gormley um, um, sculpture. Mm. There are so Margate has one of these, and this is his his sculpture is called Another Time. Um, there are quite a lot of figures on a beach. Um, near Liverpool, but this is a one-off. This is just one person um, okay. in, in in the sea at Margate, um, and it was it was it was a relatively nice day. Um, but obviously, the you know the, the tide comes in and out, and, and when you first get to Margate and see a half submerged figure right out in the sea, it's really very haunting, actually. Yeah, I um, bet, yeah. So yeah, it's. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I can't. I, I you know, um, the, the, the sculpture's not mine, and, it, and and lots of people try and get similar shots. But it's um, I'm quite pleased with the, the minimal look of this and the the minimal the minimal clouds to the cover there as, as well. Again, it's it's a long exposure shot to make the, the sea very misty and, and to blur the, the clouds as well. Actually, that is, does seem to be a good. That, I think that's why I thought it was maybe. You know, if uh, to like, if it was someone told me it was like a Maldives on a cloudy day, I'd, yeah, I'd say, is. yeah, that's right, yeah. because that yeah. softness of the you're taking the harshness out of the water, it just feels up soft and yeah, feels like it's yeah. clear. Perhaps if it was in a in, you know color color photo, but um, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, I, I, see, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, so this is this is one of my favourites. Um, and uh, this is at a place called Dovercourt um, in Essex, which is near Harwich. Um, it's a 19th century um, cast iron and timber lighthouse, which isn't used anymore. So it's, it has a, you know, in slight disrepair, which sort of adds, adds to it. Um, I've actually, I went back there the last weekend to, 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 to catch some more images and, and some different images of it. Um, this one with a lot, this was a particularly long exposure shot. And um, because of the, uh, because of, the, this was sort of around dawn and because of the sort of circumstances, um, I managed to capture the, you know, this incredible reflection um, in, in the sea. 
Um, but I, I just, I love it as a subject. Um, again, I think hopefully, you know, some people have said it looks like some sort of um, Victorian spacecraft or something. Yeah, it know? does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but again, that, that, that's quite a popular one with, uh, with, with, uh, with customers. So, um, yeah. yeah. Pretty definitely H yeah HG Wells yeah yes. spaceship landing on a yeah. landing on on a planet yeah, far far right, away. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, the um, actually on the, it, the um, where where it's uh, where it's shot there at Dover Court um, the Dover Court's probably I don't know if many people know but it's it's where the, there's a holiday camp there or there was a holiday camp and it's where they filmed Heidi High so uh, but oh, really, oh wow good yeah, back in the day. <laughs> Brilliant. I like, I like how the way actually that you, you look at the, the stairs as well, and you realise, of course, yeah, because the because the tides the tides in, isn't it? So usually that those stairs yeah. are made for higher waters, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, um, yes, yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. And then you okay, you introduced introduced a little bit of colour into this one. Yeah, I I mean, I, it's um I think it was warranted in this, and I and I think it's I think this is better than the. The, the black and white version. Um, this is a pin mill, uh, which is sort of along the estuary from, um, from Ipswich in Suffolk. Um, and there are a lot of boat wrecks there. This is quite a popular um, location for, uh, uh, for photographers to go to. Um, mm. But the, um, the, there are quite a few uh, of, of these wrecks in various states of disrepair. And with with really faded paint, so you can just see this was a again this was a, a light sort of sunrise. So there was a bit of colour in the sky, a little bit of colour in the water, and you've got the lovely faded sort of blues and reds of the on on, on a couple of the boats there. So I just thought that that, that it just seemed to warrant that tiny bit of colour, and it, it looks better for it, I think, than as I say, than my black and white image. Yeah, it's lovely. Where was this one? This is um, this is actually on the Rutland Rut Water, the, the the reservoir, um, and this is um, this is Normanton Church, um, which I don't know. I, I sort of look at it and think it could be on a, a you know a lock in Scotland or or, or something yeah. like that. It's yeah, um, the the history of this is that the. It looks slightly out of proportion because originally the church was twice as high as that. Um, when they were when they flooded the area to make the reservoir, um, they I, they sort of shored the church up and protected its its lower floor. But its lower floor is or or half of it, not not its lower floor, um, but half of it is actually submerged in in the reservoir, which is why okay. it's. Uh, uh, you know why it looks slightly out of proportion but it's it's um but it, it, it it's still an amazing you know it it's it's out there on this little promontory and it's uh yeah it's a really interesting place to visit i definitely got scotland vibes from it i it's funny i mean, it, sure. I mean a lot of don't people know what it is about it maybe it's the architecture Yes, yes, well, yeah. A lot of people like to know where I've taken these things, but, you know, I, and I always tell them, but sometimes I think it's nice just to leave it to your imagination, you know, where, 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 where do you think it is, you know, because uh, um, sometimes the, um, it, it, I think it's, um, it, it sort of spoils it slightly to, to have it explained. Yeah, it, so, oh, no, very, yeah, that. very true. So, yeah. This is great. So this so tell us about this one. Was this was this in a, the same the same place this, you took? Yeah, this, absolutely this right. So this is Pinmill again. Again, quite a this this particular boat is 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 quite popular with photographers. Um, and it's sort of I think this was a sort of very hazy um, dawn, long exposure shot. So you you know you can it isolates the um, the, the boat a little bit more, um, and you, you've got the, the you know, sort of almost haunting sort of reflection there as well. But yeah. yeah, very, yeah, very, very pleased with that, really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I wanted to put in something slightly different. I don't do an awful lot of um, portraits, um, but this this is actually my daughter, um, Robin, who's uh, a, a singer songwriter, um, and um, she's she's quite photogenic. But here with the, I, I you know I'm, I'm I wanted to create something that was uh, you know very dramatic, and here you, you've got the a massive contrast of the, you know, the really dark with just a little bit of light on quite, I think, quite natural light I used on, on, on one side of the face. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's album cover stuff. That is. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, she, she might get to make an album at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, lovely. yeah. And um, so those, I mean, thank, yeah, thanks for taking us through through your pieces. There's so some some fast, fantastic pieces there. And oh, thank you. what is your what is your um? If you could, if someone was thinking about okay, like you know, really like really like what Mark's you know Mark does, I wouldn't mind you know doing some of that kind of stuff myself or more of it myself. What kind of um? What kind of tips and tricks would you give in? terms of like you know getting something like that what's is there any kind of anything you could you know you could suggest you know, to be able to you know get to this kind of area of you know i mean i i, I mean i i think you know obviously um a, a, a good camera um helps to to start with um but i mean uh, as, a, as a you know um a a a, a good shot you know a a good shot, a, a, a good shot, whether it's on your, your iPhone or, uh, but I mean, with, but with what I'm doing, it, it, does, it does take a, a relatively good camera um, with, with a little range of lenses and a, and a tripod and that sort of thing um, and, and various good screw-on filters so that you can take um, the long exposure shots. Um, but I would, I mean, I would say just, just get out there um, I think the way I started really was to, as I say, um, it was the the long exposure, um, black and white shots from people like Michael Kenner, and I didn't I didn't know how those were done, but I I bought a, I bought a camera, and I'd go to the coast, and to be honest, most of the time, I don't, and I um, I, just, I got it wrong for 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 quite a while. Um, mm. But I'd come home and, and study um, and read and, and, and work out what I'd done wrong, really. Mm. Um, I, so I'm, I'm largely self-taught. Um, but if, if that's, you know, if, 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 that's, if that's not how you like to learn, then, of course, there are, lots of, there are lots of courses you can go on. There's a lot of help on YouTube, for instance, and there'll be a lot of help sure. from, from people during the Cambridge Photography Week as well. But I, I'd certainly say, just, I mean, for starters, go out there and get it wrong, and um, you know, and, um, yeah. and and learn from that. You know, um, I think that's that's, that's it, it certainly helped help me quite a lot. Yeah, there's a lot, lot to say for trial trial and error, and not trying to yeah. Yeah. chase chase perfection right right from the off, because otherwise you just just yeah. stop yourself from doing it. <laughs> it would, yeah, uh, and I'm and I'm still, I mean, I'm still quite a big critic of myself. I mean, obviously. Um, most of what I take up, you know, um, I, I won't ever use. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always, you know, I'm always after something slight, slightly different. Um, um, hopefully something a little bit different from what other people are doing or have done. Um, you just try and give it a slightly personal touch. Um, and, um, yeah, just, just, just try and come up with something a little bit more exciting. And you are, you mentioned you, you've been exhibiting your work as well. Tell us a bit about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there's, um, I've largely exhibited through um, Cambridge Open Studios, um, yeah. which, is, which has existed in Cambridge for, for decades, I think. Um, mm. It's now, I think it has hundreds of exhibitors every year. Um, it's... Um, for a small fee, you're, um, there's, there's a brochure every year and, and we open our homes and our studios um, to the public. 
um, for um, for one or, or or up to four weekends in July, um, and it's completely free for the general public just to come in and, and see your work, um, buy it if they want to, but they're under no obligation, um, and, and you know and to discuss um, you know dis- discuss what they like or they don't like. Um, so mm-hmm. it's it's a it's um, it's a really positive experience actually. Um, and um, you know, I'll, I'll continue to, to do that. Um, and some of us also um, have a have a smaller um, open studios towards Christmas as well. Um, okay. Yeah, love it. And what um, we've actually yeah we've uh, spoken with um, we've also had a conversation with um, Robin Stamp from Cambridge Open Studios. Yeah, about yeah. Uh, her, her exhibiting, you know, her own work. And actually, we'll have um, Mark will be at the Cambridge Photography Show along with Robin and uh, Robin Stemp and Sarah Rawlinson and uh, Gail Abbott. Uh, and they'll be exhibiting some of their work. So make sure to, um, everyone, make sure to get down to the Hilton in Cambridge on Downing Street on Saturday, the 8th of October. We, um, we have free exhibitor passes. Um, which gives you access to the exhibition, the exhibition and talks, and we are running workshops which um, cost twenty pounds. So, get over to cambridgephotography.com and and take a look. And uh, Mark, you're also going to be on a panel discussion, aren't you? Um, where um, we're delighted to have you join and say other members of the Cambridge Open Studio, um, talking about actually setting up your own studio and. Uh, and what you can do to, to help share your work with with the world, or certainly with the closer community in Cambridge. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate your time today, Mark. It was great to, you know, talk through some of your shots. And, um, yeah, it's, um, say, some beautiful photography there from from Cambridge to to, um, to much further afield. Um, and, yeah, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday, the 8th of October. I do too. Thank you very much, Chris. That's, that's been lovely. Thank you.